everybody, Ben Gothard here, and I wanted to talk a little bit today about, whoop, you can see my mic, uh, I want to talk a little bit today about becoming a millionaire, and I want to ask you the question, do you want to become a millionaire? Now, a lot of you may be thinking that becoming a millionaire is out of reach, it's not realistic, that you can't do it, but I want to tell you that it is possible. And that it is not only realistic, but you have absolutely every opportunity to become a millionaire. Okay, now let me explain what I mean by that. And I want to explain what I mean by that through this book, The Millionaire Mind. And this is a fantastic book, and I just finished it. Um, it was lent to me by a good friend. You know who you are. Thank you very much for that. And this book is brilliant because it breaks down the millionaire mind. Now you may have some um, preconceived notions as to who millionaires are, what millionaires do, how they become wealthy, but let me tell you, um, there's not one path, okay? And there are many ways to success, but there are common themes and significant trends that we can learn about and we can study and we can replicate in our own lives from millionaires, and that's exactly what the author in this book does now the author and I have a little board over here so I'm going to be um, you know looking there for notes every once in a while the author his name is Dr. Thomas J. Stanley and he is the national best-selling author of this book The Millionaire Mind also The Millionaire Next Door and he's a very influential and brilliant man and entrepreneur and he has made his living he has made it his goal his life's purpose to study successful people to study millionaires see how they operate and teach other people how to become millionaires in the process okay so I want to start off by reading you a quote uh, it's it's the first paragraph in the book and it really is profound and and it goes like this it says they live in lovely homes located in fine neighborhoods balance is their approach to life they are financially independent yet they enjoy life they are not all work no play type of people most became millionaires in one generation. Neither their lifestyle nor their wealth was generated from being highly leveraged financially. They are not credit junkies. How did they accomplish this? How did they balance their need to become wealthy and economically productive with their need to enjoy life? They have the millionaire mind. Now, I don't know about you, but one of my goals in life is to become financially independent, to become wealthy, but to enjoy life at the same time. I want to travel. I have goals in my life. There are things that I need to do in order to become fulfilled, in order to live a fulfilled life. And in order to do that, I recognize that I need money. Now, money's not everything. And to me, family always comes first. Friends always come first. Being fulfilled in life always comes first, making an impact. But money is important because it gives you the ability to do the things that you need to do and that you want to do and you need it to survive. So instead of fighting with it, let's learn how to make our money work for us and let's learn to adapt the millionaire mind. So Dr. Thomas J. Stanley in this book interviewed 733 millionaires and he found that there were a lot of similarities between these millionaires, right? And so what he did was in this book, The Millionaire Mind, he has documented exactly what he's found. And it's very interesting. So I'm going to share with you some of the key principles of what I took away and what he talks about in his research. Because this book is research. He did a lot of work, he put in a lot of hours, and he found some really great things. The first of which... And I'm going to again read you a quote. Now, I'm not going to be just reading you this book. Um, it would be a little silly, but, but I think it's important to read a few quotes from this because he did the research, and I can only convey what I got from this book, and he can teach you more. So I, I do highly encourage everybody to check this book out. It's a, it's a great book, but I did want to share with you some of the concepts that I took from it because not everybody has time to read this this you know massive book. It's a couple hundred pages. So... One of, the, one of the biggest takeaways was that these people recognize, and I quote, money is not their God. You control it, not let it control you. Okay, And that is one of the common themes that you see among successful people. They learn how to make their money work for them 
instead of them working for their money. Now, it may be a little counterintuitive. You say, okay, well, I go to work to make money, right? You know, I show up to my job every day to make money, okay? But the most successful people, once they have money, once they have capital, then they get that money to work for them. They put their money back to work for them so that the money works for them, they don't work for their money, okay? So in this book, uh, Dr., uh, Dr. Stanley talks about a lot of important things. And I want to go through with you and kind of hit on the main points of what he talks about in his book, in, in this book, The Millionaire Mind. So the first one are success factors. Now he asked, again, he, he sampled 733 millionaires and he was asking them different questions, okay? One of the first things he asked them was, on a list, if you had to list out factors that contributed to your success, what would those factors be? And the top five, and I'm only going to share the top five with you. You can read the top 30 in here. But the top five were integrity, okay? That is, are you honest? Are you somebody of good character? Can somebody trust you? When you say you're going to do something, are you going to live up to that, right? That's integrity. Discipline. Are you going to show up to work every single day? Are you going to do the things that you need to do every single day in order to become successful, right? That is discipline, okay? Um, there is so, There are social skills, right? Can you have a conversation with another human being? Can you connect with somebody on a very personal level? Can you network? Can you go out and interact with your customers? Can you, can you build customers? Can you talk to people? Can you learn from mentors, right? Those are all social skills. Four is a supportive spouse. And I thought this was really interesting. A book about money is talking about the relationship that you have with your spouse, okay? And it's really brilliant because the person who you, your spouse, the person who you're married to, that is one of the people that you spend the most time with in your life. That's one of the most influential people in your life, right? Because the people that you spend the most time around are the people that have the most influence on you, whether you recognize it or not. So it really does make sense that your choice of spouse is incredibly important and is a huge predictor of your economic productivity, your economic success. So uh, integrity, discipline, social skills, support a spouse, and the fifth is hard work. At the end of the day, if you don't put in the work, you're not going to achieve the goals. You're not going to have that success that you want. So those five success factors are the top five in this book that are listed by millionaires as the reasons why they were successful. And then he went on to talk about school days. And one thing that I really like about this book is that he makes a very clear distinction between being good in school and being economically productive. Now, I'm not at all saying that you should drop out of school. I'm not at all saying that. But what I am saying is that even if you haven't been an absolute rock star in school, and it happens, you know, like I understand that. We have lives and we have friends. We want to do things. We're trying to chase our goals. We have to work. We have to get money. We also want to enjoy life. We need to sleep sometime. Sometime we probably need to sleep, right? That's like a pretty important thing to surviving. And on top of that, we also have to make good grades, right, if, if, we're, if we're a student. So... He talks about how the people who are the most successful and he, he compares all of their performance in school and he found something interesting that the most successful people in school did not always necessarily translate into being the most successful later on in life. And I'm not going to go too deep into it, but that's just saying even if you're not doing as well as you want to in school, that doesn't mean that you are doomed to live a life of mediocrity, that, that you're not going to be successful one day. You absolutely can be successful. You absolutely can be a millionaire. You just need to adopt the millionaire mind, okay? Grades aren't everything. Grades are important. I'm not at all saying drop out of school, stay in school, get educated. That is one path to success, right? If you want to become a lawyer or you want to become a physician, a doctor, then you need to go and you know take those classes. You need that formal education, but it's not everything. And if you don't have it, that is not an impediment to you that's not an obstacle to for you to become successful and more importantly it's not an excuse okay so school days they're important right because if you look back at your school days you can see okay why am i doing the things that i'm doing what has led to that and how can i make a correction and and, and now lead myself to further success so that's important he also talks about courage and wealth and he says and it is proven by his research in this book that there is a very positive correlation between courage and wealth, between taking financial risks and wealth. The people who are not 
confident in their own abilities, the people who do not take the risk and invest in themselves, and the people who are too scared to get up and try, they're not going to be the ones that are successful. If you don't, if you don't try, you're not going to be successful. And when you try, you're going to fail. Okay, it's inevitable that that some points along the road of you trying, you're going to fail. But it's all part of the game. It's all part of the process. It's a journey. You're not just going to wake up one day and bam, be wealthy, bam, be successful. It's a lot of work, and you got to fail a lot of times in order to learn how to succeed. It's it's life's self-correcting factor, right? You fail, you figure out why you failed, how you failed, how you can better it, and then you do it again, right? Just keep going. So he talks about courage and wealth. He also talks about vocation. And one of the things he talks, he actually says is vocation, 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 right? So it's so important to pick a, a career path, a job, a, a business, an entrepreneurial direction to go to that you like, okay? And he gives three, and it's not just like, it's not just like, I actually misspoke there. It's not just like, he gives three very important, um, if you will, uh, um, requirements for your vocation, okay? The first is high profitability. When you go into a certain industry or a certain business, okay, there are some businesses that are more profitable than others, right? So if you are selling, for example, if you are selling pens and you are selling a pen for $2 and you're making a pen for $1, okay, so you're making a profit of $1 for every pen that you sell, minus marketing and administrative, but, but you know, you're making a dollar for every pen. In order to, be, to make a million dollars, you have to sell a million pens. Or you could be a private yacht salesman or a private island salesman and you take 5% commission on everything that you sell and you sell a yacht or an island for a billion dollars, okay? Then um, you sell a yacht or you sell an island and you get 5% commission on that. It, it's, just, it's just an economy of scale. It's, it's, a different, it's a different dynamic completely, right? So you have, to pick, you have to pick something, a vocation that's very high profit, that's highly profitable, that has a high profitability factor if you want to be successful. Now, you may do something that it's not as important you to make money. Okay, great. But but know what you're getting yourself into. That's the point that uh, that Dr. Stanley is trying to make. So the first is high profitability. The second one is aptitude. Okay, you need to be good at what you're doing, or you need to have skills in place or a foundation of skills to become really good at what you want to do. Okay, I'm a very firm believer that anybody can develop skills to do anything. Okay, but what Dr. Stanley is saying in the book. And again, this is this is you know what what I'm getting from the book, and, and of course I highly encourage you to read the book. But what he's saying is pick something that complements your skills, right? If you are a very good writer, you're you're a communicate you're a very good communicator via the written word, then it wouldn't make sense to go into something highly technical with numbers and calculations where you don't get to utilize that strength, right? Play to your strengths is what he's trying to tell yours, at least what I've gotten from that, is, is to play to your strengths, right? You have a certain aptitude. You are who you are, okay? You have the skills that you have. You have the foundation that you have. Play to your strengths. If you want to develop new skills, great, do it, right? But, but recognize that you're going to have to start from scratch. And there is another book called, uh, and it escapes me, uh, the, the Outliers, okay? And in that book, the author says that it, it takes about 10,000 hours to master a skill. So if you've already put in 2,000 hours towards mastering a skill, you're a fifth of the way there. I would keep going with that and try to figure out a way to monetize that and try to work it into a business model, a highly profitable business model that plays with your strengths, right? So, so j j just be aware of yourself. Be aware of what you're good at, what you can do, what you like doing, and you are setting yourself up to become a millionaire. The third is do something that you love because if you don't do something that you love, you're going to get burnt out. You're gonna not want to do it. You're gonna hate it. You, you, you just you, there's gonna be a lot of churn in, in in the things that you do because if you're not doing the thing that you love or the things that you love, you're not gonna be happy, right? So, so the three things for vocation, vocation, vocation are high profitability, aptitude, and love for what you do. So let's move on. And I have just a few more points for y'all about this book. It, it really is a great book. I can't, I can't speak highly of it enough. Um, the, the next one is choice of spouse. Now, an interesting thing 
Uh, and But one of the things that he talks about in this book is the choice of spouse because there's a correlation, a very positive correlation between the number of years that you're married and the level of wealth that you have. And, and let's break that down for a second. That makes a ton of sense. If you're married for longer, that's a more sustainable relationship, that's a healthier relationship most of the time. If you're married for longer, you have you have a greater chance of accumulating more wealth, right? If you're working together with your spouse, you have a, a supportive spouse, a very healthy relationship. The two of you are going to accumulate wealth the longer that y'all are together, right? If, if you're constantly divorcing, then you're losing half of what you have and you're losing half of what you have. So it just makes sense that if you stay together, and 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 you you know the choice of spouse is very important because the longer you stay together, the higher chance that you have of accumulating more wealth. Now, I am not in any any way trying to give advice on marriage at all. That's not what I'm trying to do at all. I'm simply trying to relay a concept to you from this book that he says the choice of spouse is very important. And he actually goes into a little bit about picking the right spouse and some factors that these millionaires really looked for when picking these spouses. Interestingly enough, a lot of those factors were parallel to the success factors in the beginning. Integrity, discipline, social skills, hard work, honesty, those kinds of things. That's not only what people l looked for in themselves, but that's also what they looked for in partners. So it's just kind of an interesting correlation of how things tie together. So a choice of spouse is important. The next is an economically productive household. Now this comes into play more once you have kids, right? Because what he says is that when you teach your children how to live in an economically productive household, you teach them from a young age to value money, to value their time, and to understand the value of different things, to, to understand, one, how to run an economically productive household, and, and two, how to become economically productive yourself, which people can learn and, and kids can learn from a very young age and it is an important skill to learn. One of the best examples that he gives is organizing a weekly or monthly shopping list, right? You, need, you know what you need on a regular basis, write it down. Figure out what, what you need on a monthly basis to live. Figure out on a weekly basis what you need to live, what you consume as a household and plan it out. Know where those things are in your local shopping center. Know what the best prices are at the different stores and write it out. And and if you if you get your kids to do it and you're teaching them to do it, and not only does it save you time because they're organizing it, but they're also learning how to organize it and they're learning how to run an economically productive household. So that was a really good point that uh, he made that I thought was very interesting. The next is the home. And he talks a lot about the house or the home that you live in, right? A lot of people would probably, and, and I'm kind of going out on a limb here, but I think a lot of people would agree with me that the home is an asset if you have done proper research and if you're in a good neighborhood and if you are able to control the debt and pay down that debt, your home becomes an asset. And for all of the millionaires, for all of the millionaires in here, the home was a very important piece of their millionaire status. And I'll tell you why. They took the time to pick homes in very good neighborhoods, to pick homes that were very well built, that stand the test of time. An interesting thing about the homes that these millionaires picked was that a lot of them were older homes. They didn't go out and build new homes. They found homes that were very valuable, that suited their needs, their lifestyle, and they invested in the house. And by doing that, most of these millionaires saw insane returns whenever they would sell their house, if they ever did sell their house. Most of them stayed in one place and built up their entire foundation in that neighborhood because they were in such a good neighborhood, because they had such good neighbors, and because they had done the research. Now, one, if for nothing else, I would get this book just for the the advice that he gives about picking a home. Because picking a home is one of the biz biggest expenses that most people have. And he gives such good advice on how to pick a home. And, and I'm not going to even try to, to tell you about it as well as he does. Because he goes into depth about the strategy of actually picking a really good home that will appreciate and value. And that will 
in time pay you dividends throughout your life. So definitely, if, if for no other reason, pick this up as a guide to picking your next home because it is so incredibly important that you don't get burned here. Uh, he talks about people that, that did it the right way and that did it the wrong way. And the people that did it the wrong way ended up being extremely, extremely over leveraged as far as debt. They had way too much debt than they could handle and it ended up biting them in the ass. So so definitely pick up this book to if you want to learn how to go about doing research for a house and, and, and get a house or a home that will not only not put you in debt, but actually will become an asset for you. It, it's really important to understand that. So the last one is lifestyle. And lifestyle is extremely important. A lot of people think, a lot of people think, and it's not just me saying that. He also says in this book that a lot of people have this perception of millionaires, that they're vacationing in Paris, or they're skiing in the Swiss Alps, or they're taking cruises around the world. And some millionaires do that, okay? But it's not as often as you would think. The activities, the day-to-day -day activities that most millionaires partake in are way different than what most people think they do. The number one activity that the millionaires spent their time doing, what, and, and this is based on research again, the number one activities that millionaires spent time doing was spending time with their kids, was taking them to soccer practice or being with them, going with them to a park and, and spending time with their kids, spending time with their family. So this book really gives a good idea of who millionaires are. What do they do? What do they spend their time doing? Where do they invest their time? Right? And so by reading this and by understanding that at a very fundamental level, you can implement this, these tactics into your own life. You can adopt the millionaire mind. 